Welcome back to ATL Day Ones. I am Tanitra. This is Jarvis, and we appreciate you guys for rocking with us. What's good, Atlanta? Obviously, not my voice these days with this allergy issue that I'm dealing with. So, you guys, be patient with me. But I know you guys are dealing with it as well. Cray, cray weather here in Atlanta. But you know what? It doesn't matter because as long as you guys rock with us, we are all good. And you have been because we're almost up to a thousand subscribers. We appreciate you hitting the subscribe button. Oh, we keep cool. telling others to hit that button as well. Go to YouTube, put a like on our page, comment, and get us over a thousand. Like I said, handshake and hug on deck if that's what you do. Also, <laughs> anywhere you check out your podcast audio wise, please do check us out there as well because we are every, every, everywhere. You know what? A lot of people are saying too, Jarvis, hawks are everywhere, mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. over the place, just in terms of knowing. A lot of chatter. Exactly. A lot mm -hmm. of commentary, just in terms of knowing where they're going to go this offseason. And really, that's top to bottom. You and I have started off talking about where they potentially will go player wise, but. There's a lot of commentary on where they're going to go as far as coaching and as far as the front office as well. So we know that recently Tony Ressler made statements where he did give a vote of confidence actually to both Nate McMillan and Travis Link, but also acknowledged that he felt like they both underperformed. So I want to start with a basic but kind of a deep dive question because, you know, we deep dive in our second segment. Nate McMillan started off in an interim space, right? Mm -hmm. Then he moves into head coaching in a full-time space with this entire season. I think it's safe to say that we would agree that we wouldn't have called this season a success per se. But my question is, as you kind of look big picture and then we'll drill it down even more. Well, what does success look like in your opinion for maybe Tony wrestler? What does success look like for you? What do we, what do you, them, him, we all need to see out of him for him to stay with this organization past next season? You know what? I think the main thing is for them, is, for Nate McMillan, is they. I think success looks like getting out of the first round of the playoffs. I, I think hovering around that fourth or fifth seed, you yeah, know, maybe yeah. even, you know, at the lowest six, stay out of the play-in round Got because it. that is that is too nerve-wracking. You know, you can't make plans to, you know, have ticket sales and all that stuff. And not to say that Tony Wrestler is focused – solely on the money right? right we all know where he is where he stands mm -hmm. financially like hey if it makes sense do it you know that's sure. kind of where he is and and I, I love that mentality as an owner but I, I do think that it is no secret that you know NBA teams they they add on to the end of that end of that year the end of the year budget when when they make it into the playoffs and have right. those you know at least guaranteed three home games or four home games depending on your record yeah, and how, how how you fall as far as the rankings, but I, I think that that's the main thing. I think Nate McMillan has to with this new roster, like we talked about, the changes that need to be, yes. be need to be made. We'll 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 know um, pretty soon once the draft rolls around whether or not they watch the show and pay attention to us and what they got going on. We know they do, but you know it, it's good to get that that confirmation. You yeah. know um, when they copycat, you know what what we talked about, you know doing um, on yesterday. But I think that what, right now though, the the main thing is they have to you know get out of that first round, mm -hmm. stay away from that play in tournament, sure. and I think that. Some of the adjustments that they had to make in the playoff series against the Heat, right? And for, for one prime example, getting Trey comfortable playing off the ball. I think if Nate can work with him this summer and, and, and make sure and drill down into Trey's head, like, hey, this is what you need to work on. Give him a plan. And maybe even Trey even mentions that. If Trey can outwardly give Nate McMillan a vote of confidence, if your superstar is vouching for you, that's how you know for sure you're going to stick around because we know how the NBA rolls today. You're like, if you ain't got no superstar, you ain't got nothing. And if your superstar isn't happy, you ain't got nothing either. So, but it, so if you have your superstar vouching publicly for your for your head coach, I think that that'll be that'll pretty much guarantee you around at least for in the next few years. 
Yeah, and the higher seed you can get, there are so many positives to that, obviously, mm -hmm. from an injury perspective. Fewer games, yep. fewer opportunities to have players go down with injury because you think about the fact, not that Clint Capella wouldn't have maybe gone down in a heat series or even a second round series, but to see him go down in a play-in game, it, all, it makes you at least think about what could have been in terms of possibly stretching the, the series against the Heat. The other piece there is this talking, going back to what you're saying about Nate McMillan and where he stands and what the potential could be for him. I go back to what I said as well, in that he was an interim coach yep. who then came in and took the team on a run. But when he came in, before he was the interim coach, he came in as, we'll call it a consultant to really add some depth <laughs> and some breadth and some experience to Lloyd Pierce's. We all knew what it was, though. They can call him a consultant. Yes. We knew what it was. Yeah, the rest Just of the break a case of emergency. Like, <laughs> exactly. The rest of the world was like, uh -uh. I think you just tapped into your replacement. So it really begs the question of this, because I believe everybody also would collectively agree that Travis Schlink, and Nate McMillan are on the veritable hot seat, if you will. Mm -hmm. So if Nate McMillan is on the hot seat and the organization has kind of hinted at the possibility of, we'll say, adding or changing staff, is that something that he needs to kind of look over his shoulder and look to see, oh my, is the replacement going to be replaced by that guy? Yeah, I, I think Nate needs to understand – where he is right and like you said i think you need to get your superstar on board i'll go back to that get your superstar on board with you by coming up with a plan on how he can get better and i and i think that he needs to look at it as an opportunity if they're going to bring on an assistant coach because there are times where you're going to miss things and we pointed it out during the heat series right you know the heat series was something that kind of just exposed the Hawks. That was the um, um, uh, a southern exposure or the beach exposure, so to speak, you know, uh, with, with what's going on or what's going wrong with this team. And when you have, you know, those assistants and they're not necessarily paying attention to the, the little things because, mm -hmm. you know, you have a lot going on when you're the head coach. You're worried about when to take timeouts or when to not take timeouts or you, you're yeah. trying to figure out what's going on. You're trying to get the play the next play or or you're trying to call plays from the sidelines and, hey, Trey, you need to do this or do that or whatever. And you're trying to make sure those guys are coming to play defense and all that good stuff. So you need a, a good assistant coach, some guy, a guy with some experience that can point some things out to be your help meet, as so to speak. And and I think that he shouldn't look at as it and be concerned. I think he should look at it as an opportunity to say, you know what, I know what it is. I've been here before. I've been fired before. I get it. Yeah. But I know that in order for me to be successful, I probably do need somebody that not necessarily is my guy, but he right. has that experience and that eye to be able to pay attention to the little things that can help me out and help the team out as from a success standpoint. Yeah, and hopefully that lobbying has started now because you make a great point. For Trey Young, it'll be important for him not to just be in lockstep with Nate McMillan and really kind of co-sign and support some things that he's doing, but really to go after some of these uh, high-end mm -hmm. free agents and even some players who potentially would come to the Hawks through a blockbuster trade because mm -hmm. now that Atlanta has become a destination of sorts for free agents or for those top tier players, hopefully Trey has already started getting on the horn and telling people and telling players about what an amazing opportunity it would be to hey, come big here head. <laughs> Atlanta. But another thing that is not so amazing about Atlanta is when somebody gets got, especially someone who is a pillar of the community, someone who did everything he could during the time that he was here as a player, and now he moves on to greener pastures, and you want to try to get him before he moves on? <laughs> Jarvis and I are not pleased. And we'll talk about it in For the Culture on the other side. It's ATL Day Ones. See you on the other side in a minute.